it's CEO here and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you some pro tips and tricks that you wish you knew sooner about Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've played the game for over 5,000 hours and these are just some tips and tricks that I picked up along the way that will make the game more enjoyable for you and help you achieve your dream island. If you've just restarted your island or you're picking up Animal Crossing for the first time, I guarantee that these tips and tricks will help you so much and you'll be so inspired and you're never gonna wanna put the game down. If you find this video helpful, subscribe, hit the like button and click the bell button to get notified when I post more videos. It will also mean the world to me if you leave a comment because that really helps my video succeed with the YouTube algorithm. I apologize if I sound kind of nasally. I'm getting over my second time with COVID. Luckily, it wasn't as bad as my first time, so I hope I don't sound too weird in this video. All right, let's jump into the video. My first pro tip is to use custom designs when moving buildings on your island. This is especially helpful if you're planning a neighborhood and you're trying to move your villager houses. Here I have a plot where I'm gonna put Blue Bear's house. You can use the in-game pathing to sort of carve out a plot where you want the house to be, but I recommend you use custom designs. A smart reason to use custom designs instead of the in-game terraforming pathing is because you need to have a three-star island to even unlock terraforming, which includes the in-game pathing, but you can use custom designs as pathing right from the beginning. So no need to wait until you have a three-star island to use this trick. Villager houses are three by four, but there's an extra row in the front where the stoop is, so you have to take that into account. So when you're mapping out where you want the house to be, you have to create a four by four grid. I recommend using custom designs that you can clearly tell where they start and where they end. Some designs are made to just blend into each other and those are gonna be really hard to use because you won't be able to see the four x four grid exactly. I have my grid, now let's go move Blue Bear's house. When you place your house, it does show you this yellow overlay of where the building will be put. And if you place it on grass that doesn't have any designs, it's sorta of hard to tell exactly where the building will place, even when you use the let me imagine it option. But with the custom designs, if they line up exactly with the yellow frame framework, you can be 100% confident you're putting the house exactly where you want it to be. Without planning with custom designs, it's very easy to misplace your house, even by one tile. But with this trick, you won't have to worry anymore. And as a bonus, when you place the housing plot, all the custom designs underneath magically disappear, so you don't have to worry about even removing them. It's almost like the game wants you to use this method. My next pro tip is to never eat fruit. If you wanna break rocks to move them or dig up a tree to plant it somewhere else, you're going to need to eat something so you get super strength in order to do these tasks. If you have a lot of trees you want to move and a lot of rocks you wanna break, eating one piece of fruit one at a time is gonna take way too long. So here's what you're gonna do instead. Time travel to Sunday and buy turnips from Daisy May. You don't need to worry about the stock market. We're not gonna touch that at all. You just need the turnips. The key thing here is that Daisy May sells the turnips in bunches of 10. So you can never have a single turnip. There will always be 10 of them. Now all you have to do is go to your pockets, select your turnips, and it will automatically give you the option to eat 10 turnips at a time. This is a one and done method to get that super strength you're gonna need. Because when you eat one turnip, you get 10 super strengths. And you only have to do one action instead of 10. Now you can break rocks to your heart's content and move all those trees that are in your way. But if you're feeling fancy, you can go to a stove and cook a dish. And when you eat the food you prepared, in this case, I'm eating cookies, you get five super strengths all at once. Now this does have an extra step because you have to cook the food, but this is a great alternative if you don't want to time travel to Sunday to buy turnips and you already have a lot of prepared food in your storage. My next pro tip is to not hit your rocks all willy nilly. Hitting your rocks is the only way to get rocks clay, iron, and even gold nuggets as crafting materials. If you really want to experience everything that New Horizons has to offer, you're going to need to collect these materials. Luckily for you, each rock is capable of giving you eight resources every day, but only if you do this trick. So here's what you gotta do. Head on over to a fresh rock that you haven't hit today and put two items at the corner of each rock, leaving one empty tile. I'm putting down custom designs so you can see exactly what I mean. Put down three tiles. I have a custom design above the rock, the top right corner of the rock, and the right middle of the rock. Now using any two items, except those you can walk over, like the floor light and the cherry blossom petal pile, place the items like I have shown right here. It's hard to explain, it's easier just to 
show you. And now when you hit the rock, spam A over and over again. And this time, because you've placed those items, you'll be able to get eight resources out of this one rock. This is because the two items create a blockade. Because when you hit a rock, you get some pushback. And in that split second, it will take you to walk back towards the rock. You've already lost your chance of getting those eight crafting materials. So use the blockades, you won't regret it. And you can place the blockades around any corner of the rock. It doesn't have to be the top right. You can also use cliffs, bushes, and trees to create some blockades, which may fit your island's landscape better, especially if you don't want two random items all over your island. Just make sure you don't have any items in the froggy chair area, including placed and dropped items. Even if you placed your rock blockades, any items in the froggy chair area will prevent a crafting material to spawn when you hit your rock. And when you're hitting your rocks, make sure your shovel has enough uses so it doesn't break in the middle of your hitting session. I got lucky and my shovel broke right at the end, but if your shovel breaks mid-hitting, you are going to lose that timing and you won't be able to get all eight crafting materials like you should have from your rock. My next pro tip is to always be holding a net if you're going to be shaking trees. This only applies to cedar, oak, and every fruit tree, excluding the coconut tree. This is important because when you're shaking trees, you have a chance of a wasp nest to fly out. And these are not chill wasps. These are wasps that are angry and gonna kill you. Well, not kill you, but they're gonna sting you and it's gonna hurt. You can use medicine to heal yourself if you get stung, but if you get stung twice without using medicine, your villager will faint and you'll get shot right back to your house, which is super annoying. Some instances that you're going to be shaking your trees is if you wanna get a bunch of tree branches or during the festive season, if you're trying to get those ornaments to craft those festive DIYs. Luckily, if there is a wasp nest in the tree, it will fall on your first shake. So if you're shaking your trees for five minutes straight, trying to get every ornament, you won't have to worry about wasps stinging you the entire time. This does take a bit of practice, but as soon as you see the wasps emerge from their honeycomb, you're gonna wanna press A really fast to capture them with your net. Now again, this is all about timing. So I recommend carrying some medicine on you if you're trying to get the timing correct, because you're more than likely gonna fail, like I did, over and over and over. My last pro tip is to time travel correctly. And yes, there is a wrong way to time travel, but if you don't know the right way, I'm going to show you. Basic time traveling involves you completely closing your game. This is a time waste because you have to wait that initial loading screen when you first open the game. And New Horizons is known for these stupidly long loading screens. But luckily, we can bypass this. Before I show you this trick and to prove to you it works, currently on my island, it's January 12th. So while you're loaded into your island, don't close the game, but go to your home menu, go to settings, go to system, date and time, then change the system calendar to your desired time and or date. Now go back to the home menu and open Animal Crossing. Your island's date and time won't have changed yet. What you need to do is press the minus button and select save and end. Once your game saves, it will take you back to the title screen. This is what we want. Continue, and if you time traveled forwards, you'll get the Isabel greeting scene. However, if you time traveled backwards, you won't see Isabel, you'll go right to your house. And now you've time traveled and you've saved a whole bunch of time by not having to close and reopen the game completely. And once you exit your house after reloading, it's now my birthday, AKA it's a day forward and is now January 13th on my island. I just love being greeted by my village on my birthday. It's so cute. And those are my five pro tips and tricks that I want to share with you today. If you want to know more pro tips and tricks, and I've got a lot, let me know in the comments. Also let me know if you're going to use some of the tricks I showed you in this video. I hope they help you have a more enjoyable time when you're playing New Horizons, and that you learn something new. A huge thank you to all of my YouTube members for your continued support of me and my channel. All of my members get these super awesome perks including getting all of your comments hearted by me, priority access when I do multiplayer events in Animal Crossing on my live streams, and 24-7 access to my treasure island. If you don't know what a treasure island is, it's basically a regular Animal Crossing island full of items that are dropped on the ground for you to come and take. These include every holiday and seasonal DIY set, all of the new Nook Mile items from the 2.0 update, all of the new Nook's Cranny items from the 2.0 update, all of the new DIY and food recipes from the 2.0 update, every hybrid flower, every gyroid, every KK Slider song, the entire Sanrio set, all of the food items, every crafting material, Nook Mile tickets and bells, and so much more. I'm also working on a catalog island, and once it's finished, all of my members will have 24-7 access to that. 
My Catalog Island will basically have everything that you can find in your catalog that you can order with bells. This is a great way to get more items that you're missing, or you just want more items to finish your builds, finish decorating, give us presents, do whatever you want with them. And a sneak peek of what will be on the island will be housewares, miscellaneous, wall-mounted ceiling decor, wallpapers, floors, rugs, tops, bottom, dress up, headwear, accessories, socks, shoes, bags, umbrellas, wetsuits, and balloons. I can't wait to get this island up and running for you. I'm personally gonna use it with my non-modded switch so I can finally get every item in the game. So get excited for that. If you'd like to become a member and get access to my treasure island and all of these amazing perks, you can click the link above or in the description, or you can go to my channel homepage and click the join button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.